In this lecture, we're going to review the basics of our wave equations that we have so far. What we have is we have C, which is the speed of light that all of these electromagnetic waves travel in, equal lambda, which is the wavelength, times the frequency. Okay, and now this of course is equal to a length and this is a cycle per second sometimes called a Hertz now a Hertz or a cycle per second is one over second okay so that's all that is so a Hertz is a one over second it's something per second so anything divided by anything is per so per second so it's length per second so it's how many of these electromagnetic waves travel, now I'm leaving out the magnetic part of the spectrum, travel um, per time period. So how many of these wavelengths? Now, of course, wavelengths are beginning to the end. So there's a wavelength right there, beginning to an end. All right, so I'm just showing you the wavelengths, a full sine wave, if you want to think of it that way. So here is my wavelength. That's called lambda. Now that is that is rooted in some kind of distance, okay? And believe it or not, that distance can be very large if it's a radio wave, and be very very tiny if it's a, a light wave. So they vary. The longer wavelengths, and then we have shorter wavelengths, and they differ by essentially the distance between wavelengths. This is one. This is one wavelength again from where we start to where we finish. And this one would be from here to here. So we would say that this wavelength is smaller. And now having a smaller wavelength means you can have a higher frequency. Now why is that? Well, frequency is how many of these per second. So because these waves travel all at the same time, if you have smaller wavelengths, you can actually have more of these pulses or more of these waves per time period. So let's pretend this is one second. We would have one wave per second, all right, and our hertz would be one. And here, if this was one second, we would have one, uh, you know, I'm going to count like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if I counted correctly. Looks like I had eight, and that'd be eight per second. Okay, now computers measure how fast they process information by the same type of unit. How many bytes per second? So you'll hear you'll hear the hertz as well. So in any case, this one has to have a higher frequency, okay, and a shorter wavelength for them to make that happen because they're traveling at the same speed. They have to equal C. And if you remember, this is an inverse relationship, just like pressure times volume equals a constant, or height times density equals a constant. We've seen these relationships before. So since the speed of light is the speed that all waves travel in, the combination of these can change. All right, so that's the basics. Now, I did mention today that when we had the slinky, okay, when I was making the waves, it takes a lot more energy to create a lot more what? Wavelengths per time period than it did these long wavelengths. So energy is also tied to this, although I haven't talked about that yet. So let's go back to the problem. Let's clean all of this up. And we'll deal with something you probably haven't thought much of, but you deal with it all the time, a radio station. Although radio stations are going bye-bye since of satellite type of broadcast, but radios were an amazing thing when cars became the thing that we travel in so much. And cars were the cool things, and if you had a radio back in the day, boy, I tell you, and they were AM radios. All right, there we go. So, any case, 88.1 megahertz. So, I had an FM radio station transmit a signals uh, at 88.1. What's the wavelength? What I'm asking for is how long is that wave? That's what I'm asking. How long is that wave? Now, this is a radio wave, so we expect a pretty long wave. So, I use my formula. Speed of light equals lambda times my frequency. Now, they gave me the frequency, except careful, this M right here is megahertz. Now, if you didn't know, and it's okay if you didn't, mega, okay, is 10 to the sixth. 
All right. So what we do here is we have to convert into hertz. Okay, so we take 88.1 megahertz, and we want to get rid of megahertz, so megahertz goes on the bottom, and we want to hertz up top. Now, what's the numbers? Okay, this is a big number, so it gets a small value. So for every one of these is 10 to the 6, or a million. And of course, megahertz cancel. We multiply that through. And what we get is 8.81 times 10 to the, make sure I get this right, 6, hold on, 8.81 times the 7, sorry. And that is 1 over second. Okay, so I can plug this in now. Let's get rid of this arrow. And let's go do some stuff here. We have our speed of light, which is something that will be given to you as 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. It's a constant. Don't ever worry about that number. That's something always given to you. And it's an important number. I think it's written down in one of the worksheets we gave out. And the unit is meter per second. That's a speed. How much distance per time period equals lambda times the frequency. The frequency we just found is 8.81 times 10 to the 7. Okay, that's a per second. That's a hertz. Now all we got to do is solve for lambda. Get rid of everything below. And what you're going to have here is lambda is equal to, right, the, uh, the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second over the frequency which is 8.81 times 10 to the 7 1 over second and if you look carefully you'll see that this second will cancel and you're left with meter over this one and what you're left with is meters which is a distance which is what we talked about Let's put this in our calculator. And what we get here is 3.4, and we'll just round out to 1 meters. Look at that. That's a big wavelength. It's a long wavelength. Okay, and that's why radio waves aren't harmful. Okay, radio waves are not harmful because, well, they're very long. We learned today that the longer the wavelength, the lower the energy of that electromagnetic wave. So that makes a lot of sense for us. And if, if you've ever been in a car and the radio station's not coming out, sometimes moving the car some distance will get you to uh, a good place to pick it up. All right. Uh, number two, we're skipping at this point. And we're going to go to number uh, three. And number three says a compact disc player uses the light of a frequency. This is a S to negative one is a per second to read information on a disk. What is the light's wavelength? So now we're solving for wavelength. Well, we have what? C is equal to um, uh, lambda, the wavelength, times the frequency. And they want to know what is the wavelength. So just before, like before, we're going to solve for wavelength. So wavelength is equal to C over the frequency. So let's go find that. Give you a shot at that now. Pause me. Okay, pause me now, and then you come back and see if you got it right. So pause me now, pause me now, pause me now. Okay, so we plugged in for speed of light, which is given to you, meters per second, 3.0, that's a constant, divided by the frequency that was given to us here. And what you get is 7.79 times 10 negative 7 meters, and that's a small wavelength. That's a tiny, tiny wavelength. We had 3 meter wavelength when it was radio waves, but when we have, okay, uh, light, Okay, in this case, it's, a, I think, a red light. Okay, the, the wavelengths are smaller, which means the frequencies must have been higher. Look at this frequency, times 10 to the 14. Look at this frequency, okay, which was what? Times, t times 10 to the 7. So a huge difference in the frequencies, 7 to 14, this is an order of 10 million times bigger. So there's 10 million times more what? 
okay, pulses or wavelengths per same time period. So obviously light has a tremendously high energy compared to a radio wave. Okay, and that's what I want you to do here. Now in the second part of this, I said in the proportion in the proportion of the electromagnetic spectrum, does the wavelength fall? Okay, where does it fall? Well, it falls in the visible region. Okay, now where is that? Let's go to one of your worksheets, your other worksheet. So here we are with the other worksheet and looking at the electromagnetic spectrum that we looked at today. We have radio waves, the longer waves, right? And then as you go across, the waves get smaller and the frequency picks up and the energy increases. Okay, so you look at the frequency, how many of these waves per second, okay, is lower than over here. And you look at the length, the meter of each of these wavelengths is much bigger over here than it is here. Okay, kind of makes sense. C equals wavelength times the frequency. Now, the last question was, what part of the electromagnetic spectrum does that red laser come from? Well, it comes from the visible region. Now, specifically, if I remember correctly, it was 7.79 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Okay, so if you look carefully for that value, Okay, 7.0, well, 7.79 is over here. Boy, we are in the red part of the spectrum. Okay, so that question, I would never really give you on a test without looking at this, but yeah, you were in the red region. So that was a red laser, an old-fashioned laser, but now we have the blue lasers, which are, have shorter wavelengths, okay, higher frequency. It can, can give off more information because there's more pulses. Okay, so in any case, getting back to the next question, what's the frequency of violet light at 400 nanometers? Well, now nanometers is not meters. Things aren't going to cancel if that's the case. So in any case, I've got to convert my 400 nanometers, all right, into meters. Getting rid of nanometers, I want meter. Now, nanometer is a billionth of a meter. Since a meter is a bigger unit, it's a small number. This is a bigger number. So this is a billion. There's a billion of these. 10 to the 9 is a billion. And therefore, nanometers go bye-bye. And 400 times 1 divided by a billion. And this gives me 4.00 times 10 to the negative 7 meters, which is, if you think about it, oops, sorry. Think about it. Where's violet light over here? That's exactly what we just calculated for. We're in the violet region of the spectrum, which has um, much, much smaller wavelengths. Uh, notice the old-fashioned designation is angstroms, and angstrom was a guy who did a lot of work with um, um, spectral lines and light in, gen in general of atoms. So angstrom is an old unit. It's 10 to the negative 8. Okay, so um, I'm sorry, 10 to the negative 10, but it's not an SI unit. Okay, so any case, so away we go. Uh, we have our meters, which is our uh, lambda, and here we go. Uh, C equals lambda times V. We're solving for frequency, so V is equal to C over lambda. So 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second all over my 4.00 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Don't get lost. What are we solving for? We're solving for the length of the wave. So look what we have. So I have uh, V is, what am I solving for? The frequency. So speed of light is meters per second. And I'm sorry, I'm solving for the frequency. I'm getting tired. So the frequency, not the, that's, that, not the wave. Okay, and you say, well, Mr. Kronsky, making these mistakes. Well, you know, I can tell that I made a mistake because these units don't give me that. Think what this unit's going to give me. This is meter over one. Meter over, these meters are going to cancel. And one over second, okay, is the unit left standing. So that's going to be a frequency. So again, a lot of different numbers here, but check your units. So in any case, plug this in your calculator. Any case, the frequency that I get is 7.5 
times 10 to the, the 14 should be a big number. It's cycles per second. There's a lot of them, or waves per second, because visible light is a small wave, especially blue waves. Does this make any sense? Blue waves, let's see what we have here. Blue waves, okay, yeah, 10 to the 15. Yeah, we're in that region there. So that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so that's your answer. Just make sure 400 has one sig fig. Okay, you could have rounded that to eight. Uh, probably should have put 400 point there, but you get the point here. Okay, or as my old teacher would say, you get the point. <laughs> all right. So, in any case, uh, last question. Uh, what's the? Uh, I think I think I did them all. Oh, three. Uh, leave that alone. Try that on your own. Okay, and check the key. Have a good weekend.